Hello everyone! This is a speed draw and color video of an artist trading card, otherwise known as an ACEO. Uh, this is a curiosity cabinet. I really like to draw curiosity cabinets and this specific one is for illustratedatcs.com and uh, it's going to be a critter curiosity cabinet. So basically I'm just, you know, decided to fill each little cubby with one creature or another. Uh, I think down in the bottom right hand side there um, I started off with a little mousy creature and the bottom left it was some, I don't know, maybe a sort of lizard rabbit combo mix. R pretty much I just, I draw fantasy and that's what I, that's what I like so that's mostly what you'll see here on my channel. Uh, then I decided I was going to fill the top three sections with bottles of various things. So we had a little fairy and some sort of just floating blob with eyes and a mermaid. And then in the center section I was like, okay, well I'm going to do uh, my mushy character because I always I kind of ran out of an idea for, to fill that big long box. And then I moved on to inking. Um, for inking on this I decided to use some uh, artist pit pens. Uh, they're by Faber Castell and I used the uh, small and extra small size. I really like these pens. My friend Dragon Alloy turned me on to them um, and they, they're they really nice and smooth. So I tend to, depending on my mood, that's that's pretty much what I ink with is the Faber-Castell pit pens, the Copic multi-liners, um, and, and I have a few other multi-liners. So, um, I didn't add in all of the detail yet with the pen because I, at the end I like to go over and touch up things more with, um, with these uh, high tech C gel pens. They're really nice to get in super fine detail at the end. So uh, as you can see uh, I started to use Copic markers to do the coloring on this. Uh, Copic markers are pretty much my go-to when I don't have time to do a, uh, a painting job. but. Also, lately I've found myself doing about 50-50 of, you know, watercolor painting and comic markers because I just really, I really love them and I have a lot of fun with them. So um, I start off with, you know, lighter colors for base layers and go in and add, you know, the darker colors and the shadows. Um, I'm really bad at um, deciding on my light source and direction that the light is coming from and I just, pretty much I just shoot from the hip and I just color. Um, I grab colors and go and sometimes test on the paper next to me. As you can see, I changed the work surface that I was working on right here. And um, so then I wasn't really testing as much and I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fly with it. Gotta get this done. Color, color, color. And record while I'm at it. Um, I can't even remember how many curiosity cabinets I've done now. Quite a, quite a few. And, and quite a few of them are... Um, critter curiosity cabinets because I just love the idea of you know all these creatures in a cabinet together so um, you can see that the shadows start to appear and it's going to start popping out more and um, I don't know what else I could possibly say um, other than oh you can see here where I started going in with the slightly thicker size um, uh, artist pit pen and I wanted to pop the little guys forward and a little bit of their um, habitat. So to make them pop forward, I thicken the lines around the characters and a little bit around their around their grass. So here again, just popping everything out a little bit more. I feel like you have to do that, um, at least for me, because I feel like otherwise the whole illustration just flattens out if I don't have some line width variation. It's also why I normally pre um, prefer to use brush pens because brush pens really give me that natural line width variation as opposed to multi-liners. Um, oh, so a few seconds ago you saw me switch over to the high-tech C pen and I started to add in a little bit of, you know, uh, hatching, hatching lines or directional lines. And then of course went back in with some more Copic marker. Uh, towards the end I tend to switch back and forth a bunch um, between the 
the inclining and you know de adding the detail with the smaller ink pen and uh, going back in with the Copic marker and it's also the point when I start to get my clo my face really close up to what I'm working on because I have a little bit of bad eyesight so <clears throat> And recording these videos uh, recently has has tested my uh, eyesight even more and I've found that I've been working a whole lot more sloppy <laughs> because I can't get my face as close up as I'd like um also so right here is I'm starting into my end game you know it's when I'm adding in um, all the white highlights and trying to fix little mistakes in my inking and line work that um, that I was messy with before and uh, this, I tend to use Copic White and I water it down a little bit and I go in with a really fine little uh, brush and just paint in the highlights. Sometimes I'll use a um, Uniball Signo uh, white gel pen or um, the Angelic Uniball gel pen. But really more and more lately I found that I've been preferring the, the watered down Copic White with the paintbrush. And uh, here I decided that there just wasn't enough darkness and so I decided to go over the cabinet um, outside with lots more um, just oh well not lots more but a darker blue blue green and of course here I'm back again adding in a little bit more um, detail lines and fixing up and cleaning my lines with the high tech seat pen because it goes over the copper white much nicer than my multi liners or my um, artist pen pens. So um, here I am again, darkening it all up to make it have more contrast. And then I'm pretty much done. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. And if you like, I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel for more little videos. Thank you so much.